Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Star Trek 25th Anniversary. Uh, I just been down on Planet Polox 5 in which the members of a religious group called Acolytes of the Stars have reported seeing being attacked by demons. So now I'm gonna... I'm gonna resolve the situation and see what's causing all this. First... I don't know if the problem is real, the result of a new illness, or mass hysteria. But at the very least, there's an injured miner who needs my help. Doctor, you need to investigate the possibility of disease, mental or physical, among these people before we go chasing up the mountains. Prelate and Given, may we see those who have encountered the demons? They are already gathered in the chapel and will cooperate in any way with you, first or on my right. This planet's as beautiful as everyone says it is. The trees, the fresh air, the freezing cold. Come on, Bones, the cold will improve your circulation. Some people get too much circulation. Let me see, I think there's an air art thing he says. I don't know, it's a problem. No? Captain, the demons and supernatural creatures are almost by definition illogical. Yet it is evident these people believe what they have seen. Barring illness or mass hysteria, I agree that a real problem seems to exist. I've never seen snow like this before. This is great. You mean you've never built a snowman, Edson? I've never even thrown a snowball. Do you think anyone would mind? Well... Later, Ensign, we have work to do. Of course, sir. Yeah, we could use the tricorders to scan certain areas and stuff. Nothing to report. But sometimes they just nothing have nothing to report. report. But then you also could scan people. Like the man's in perfect health. Now let's talk with him. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. We have received word that alien life forms are creating problems at your mining facilities at Idle Mountain. Tell me more. There are several choices you can usually do for these when they give you choices like that. And then you, there's only one really right choice or so. I think sometimes there may be two, but... Most high prelate and given, I am honored to meet you. I consider it my divine duty to assist you in any possible way with the spawn of the devil. I think that one's kind of like considered sarcastic. Been seeing ghosts and boogeymen, eh? I find that a little hard to believe. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of this the USS Enterprise. This is the right one. We have certainly, Captain Kirk. Not aliens per se. We have encountered what we believe are demons at Idle Mountain. Creatures surely emerging from the very gates of hell. Our god would not test us thus without reason. So we believe your might and insight are our god's method to help us discover what is going on. Aside from seeing demons, has any hard data been collected? Any evidence I could see? Demons? Gates of hell? This is the 23rd century. Aside from seeing demons, yeah, has any hard data been right. collected? <laughs> any evidence I could see? A skeptic would consider everything merely anecdotal or unproven. My people will gladly tell you their own stories, so you need not hear it secondhand through me. What can you tell me about the mine itself? You're wasting the time of a starship capable of destroying this planet with campfire stories? No wonder you were dumped out here in the middle of nowhere. What can you tell me about the mine itself? The area is exceptionally stable tectonically, and easy for our machinery to work in, praise God. We've mined for hafnium and a variety of useful trace elements. The deeper we dig, however, the more anomalous the variety of minerals seems to be. Our Ignatiant brother Stephen has his own theories about why this might be. Either way, the anomalies inspired brother Canbury to conduct studies inside the mine. Yesterday, he reported discovering a strange door. A gate to hell, surely. For the demons caused a cave-in immediately. Candry was trapped, unconscious, and the demons prevent us from rescuing him. We can only hope he is still alive. Thank you for your courtesy, Kirk. May you receive the guidance and protection of our God as you complete this divine mission. Okay, um, yeah, some of the other choices, though, they're kind of funny to hear. I haven't heard the responses on it, but you can actually get pretty, in some of these missions, you could get actually a score in the 20 percentage range and stuff like that, and you get scolded by Starfleet. Let's go into and talk and see the others. I like the scenery in this game, too. It's nice, uh, they actually have nice uh, artwork in here. A majestic view of Mount Idol can be seen through the skylight. 
I also like the touches of things close to the screen are kind of blurred out. Boxes of supplies and mining equipment litter the floor. A grim-faced miner colonist nods curtly at you. A sturdy man of advanced years whose blue eyes meet yours with clarity, curiosity, and directness. Spock waits for your command, patient as ever. McCoy looks anxiously about the room. James Kirk takes time to rest and ponder the remainder of the mission. Anson Everts cannot take his eyes off the sight of Mount Idol. The Tellarite appears completely at home surrounded by humans, but the wrinkling on his brow indicates a great deal of worry. You'll understand if I don't stand up, I hope. I am not well. I should scan him and see what's wrong with him. Well, it's pretty obvious what's wrong with him, but I mean, why he's not feeling well, because he looks like he's bandaged up and possibly healing, but... Jim, this man has suffered severe physical injuries to his head and arm. The wounds have been adequately cared for, however, he has developed a new Gary, an infection. If not treated swiftly, the effects can be fatal. The infection can normally be treated with hypoditoxin, but there's none on the Enterprise. I may be of some assistance. The Lorexian berry grows near the mouth of the cave. If I could acquire it, I would be able to synthesize the hypoditoxin from the berry. Unfortunately, the demons prevent us from approaching the cave entrance. Perhaps you could retrieve it for me. Let's talk with the crew members. These guys won't talk to you until you actually care for this guy here. My Uncle John lived with the Acolytes a long time ago. He died in their service helping plague victims on New Ontario 6 20 years ago. The Acolytes did a lot of good work for the needy in this quadrant. It will be good to help them for a change. Yeah, I guess Acolyte, these Acolytes are like missionaries and and more kind of uh, like some of the monks in, those, uh, in some er monasteries in Europe who kind of live in seclusion but they help out uh, needy whenever the chance arises or something happens. This man needs help, Jim, and I wouldn't want to put it off for too long. Just thinking to myself, don't mind me. The medical methods of these people seem primitive to me, Doctor. By our standards, yes. Here the Acolytes prefer a simpler lifestyle. Unfortunately, this is one of the consequences. What if I could scan these containers? I detect various pieces of mining equipment, but nothing of note. Huh. Let's see if Bones could find if any of them have actually any kind of mental illness or something. The alien's life sign seems stress elevated. Otherwise, he appears fundamentally healthy. The man seems worried and stressed, but all body functions appear within normal limits. The man is suffering moderately from the effects of his age, but seems healthy, alert, and in fine spirits. Okay, so I guess we need to get some of the berries, so let's go up in the mountain and see if we encounter any of these demons. Come on. This still crosshair is for walk in case if you haven't figured that out. <laughs> Clean hands! You see a small explosion, and the Klingon's hand falls to the ground with a dull thud. I guess they don't make Klingons like they used to, sir. Federation scum. Right here always gets it first. We gets right back up. Something, something fell. It's the Klingon's detached hand. They look like Klingons. God. Registered phaser fire and an unknown energy beam. Is everyone okay? We're fine. Did you register any disruptor fire? No, Captain. Why? Are there Klingons down there? No, just an idea, Kirk out. Fascinating. I begin to suspect that we have stumbled upon something that the colonists would never have uncovered. What is it, Spot? I wish to gather further data before making a definite conclusion, Captain. Let's look around real quick. Mount Idol rises above you. Mount Idol right A small stream flows down toward the forest. A Gindorian fern. 
These brandzite pods add a nice touch to the local flora. These are very beautiful doctor's cattails. The path is surrounded Oops. a large patch of Kaitelian tulips. The path is surrounded by some beautiful shrubbery. Hey, shrubbery! Sorry. This is not a Klingon, Captain. Not a real one. It is an organic construct, an android-like robot. It looks like a Klingon, but the appearance is entirely superficial. There is something different about this particular construct. Come here, Captain. Look at the hand. It seems to have been separated from the body. There's a wiring circuit in the middle of the palm. This is a detached hand with some kind of circuitry in the palm, Captain. Let's see what Bone says when we scan it. This is definitely not a real Klingon, Jim. Let's get that hand. Maybe you become useful. You take the Klingon's detached hand. Dr. McCoy is still hoping the cold winds that whip around Mount Idol will soon die down. Ensign Everett seems to be rattled by the attack of the Klingons. James Kirk filled with a premonition of more dangers yet to come. Your Vulcan science officer seems to be lost in thought, but remains alert. Well, we've seen Klingons. Now all we need is a few Romulans. Control your thoughts, Doctor. There is a high probability that something here is using our own memories against us. I guess this isn't such a great planet after all. We were caught flat-footed there. I don't want any more surprises to catch us off guard. Captain, I detect a recent avalanche approximately 6.2 kilometers away that occurred within the last three days. The mountain may be quite dangerous. Demons, Klingons, avalanches. What's next? The Wicked Witch of the West? That is not logical, Doctor. It wasn't supposed to be logical, you green-blooded falcon. Why does everything have to be so damn logical? I always like those, quir uh, those quips between uh, each other in the show and they put it in the game. McCoy is always one of my favorites from the original series, I have to say. Mine entrance. Feeble lights illuminate the mine tunnel. Facadian moss grows on the cave wall. A Gindorian fern. Various types of berries grow amongst the bushes. To use the tricorder on the fecodine moss extracts nourishment from hafnium, Captain. Got for him to use something in the other one, but I'll get back when I get back to it. Oh. Well, let's take a look at the hand. I haven't looked at that yet. This hand was taken from the Klingon outside the cave. It's the same much. James T. Kirk, always wondering what the next surprise will be. Spock, perhaps the most brilliant mind in Starfleet, pondering a most peculiar mystery. Leonard McCoy, hoping that the cave will be warmer than outside. Anson Everts, keeping a sharp eye out for anything dangerous. The answer to this mystery lies ahead of us, gentlemen. Does your tricorder say the cave is warmer, Spock? It is not logical for me to use my tricorder to determine the cave's temperature, Doctor. I do not see what purpose it would serve. Spock, everybody talks about the weather. I'm sorry I let you down with those Klingons back there. I should have been paying more attention. Just don't make that mistake again, Ensign. Those Klingons give me the willies. They always have. My sister was wounded by them in the Chozon ambush. We've all had our share of conflict with the Klingons, Ensign. The Organians told me that one day, humans and Klingons will become good friends. I wonder if I'll ever live to see that day. Whoever was trying to stop us may not stop with those Klingons, Captain. I recommend extreme caution. The thought had occurred to me, Mr. Spock, but thank you for my... Oops, sorry. Whoever was trying to stop... The thought had occurred to me, Mr. Spock, but thank you for mentioning it.
These seem to be Laraxian berries, Captain. They have several medicinal uses, but Dr. McCoy would know more. The fecidine moss extracts nourishment. Hmm. Gindorian ferns are regarded as an intergalactic weed, Captain. Jim, these are the berries we need to synthesize the hypodetoxin. We must get these to Brother Stephen quickly. You have retrieved a sample of berries. A juicy looking berry taken near the cave. Um, I think I'll call this a uh, part of a let's play right now. Game. Um, so I'll end it now and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.